Good afternoon from Greenville, North Carolina, the site of the 2021 Little League Softball World Series. Full week of fun and packed day of softball from Stallings Stadium. The East Region represented by New Jersey and the Southwest Region for Oklahoma, they're the champs. And I'll tell you this, this is a time and an opportunity for these kids to really blossom and shine. Here's pool play named after two softball greats in Jenny Finch and Jessica Mendoza. We've got a couple of more games coming your way here on our ESPN networks. And that's how this week is set up. Some pool play before we head into the bracket play. And we'll welcome you in and say hello. I'm Tiffany Green alongside the three-time All-American from Tennessee, Madison Shipman. And certainly, Madison, you were a great hitter back in your day. So maybe you can answer this question as we preview today's matchup. A matter of hitting versus pitching. Who wins out here? Well, you know, Tiffany, the inner hitter in me wants to say the hitters all the way, but I've gone up against some really stellar pitching, and that's exactly what we're going to see today. I guarantee you that you're going to star this game on your schedule just because of the matchup of the fantastic offense from Oklahoma that we're going to see and the great pitching from New Jersey. Absolutely. When you see this Oklahoma team and you look at their stats, let me tell you, they jump out to you immediately. It's so impressive because they hit the ball all over the field. They hit the ball opposite field up the middle they pull the ball and it doesn't just come from one or two or three players in their lineup all 13 players on their team can get the job done at any time and that's why they put up some astronomical numbers in their regional well 487 that's what this team hit in that southwest regional goose hutchins a big part of it she's one of the best power hitters that we will see in this tournament they put up a total of 30 runs. We'll see if that number can be met or exceeded here today. On the other side, a great test for Aaliyah O'Neill, who pitched every game during that regional. Aaliyah O'Neill is without a doubt the leader for this New Jersey squad, and she is fantastic in the circle. Her go-to pitch is that curveball that she's going to throw away to those right-handed batters so she can locate it for a strike whenever she needs it, and it also has great movement right at the end. That's why she gets a ton of swings and misses. And when she put up numbers, they were big. 37 strikeouts in route to making it to this point. Let's introduce you to this New Jersey squad. My name is Maura Halpin, and my favorite athlete is Alex Morgan. My name is Izzy Geff, and my favorite food is ribs. My name is Lucy Canuso, and my favorite food is spaghetti and meatballs. My name is Adriana Cepeda, and my favorite sports team is the New York Mets. My name is Brooke DeWitt, and my favorite athlete is Sis Bates. My name is Gabby Sable, and my favorite food is cheeseburgers. My name is Lexa Lopez, and my favorite subject is math. My name is Ryan Penzone, and my favorite athlete is Jenny Finch. My name is Josh Schoenfeld, and my favorite athlete is Jenny Finch. My name is Aaliyah O'Neill, and my favorite sports team is the Florida State Seminoles. Hi, my name is Kira Perini, and my favorite food is cheeseburgers. My name is Aubrey Sagar, and my favorite subject is language arts. My name is Jordan Grodzki, and my favorite team is the Mets. This New Jersey team is going to be searching for offense, but Lexi Lopez, who was red hot in the regional, she can be the fire starter at the top of the lineup for this group out of Robbinsville, New Jersey. Again, the regional runner-up coming out of the east in the circle. Cambrie Casey is hurling away for Oklahoma. She delivers the first pitch, and it's a strike by home plate umpire Brian Wolf. Casey standing at 5-1. The seventh grader is 2-0 in regional play, and she pitched seven innings, but you'll see a number of different pitchers for Oklahoma throughout this week. They don't rely just on one arm. They kind of spread it around. I think being able to use a complete staff definitely gives you an advantage in a tournament like this, playing so many games in consecutive days. Lopez couldn't catch up to that one. Swing and a miss. One and two, and Cambry Casey quickly ahead. Casey's got some really good velocity out there. She's going to throw the ball high 50s, even into the low 60s as well. So New Jersey's really going to have to work to get on time to those pitches. 
That one framed perfectly on the outside corner, nips it and strike out to start the game for Cambry Casey. You saw the smile. Already we're seeing the command out of her pitches. Look at this location. This is a curveball on the outside half of the plate, just barely nicking that outside corner. A great spot and a great way to set the tone for this Oklahoma team. Indeed, as Aaliyah O'Neill, the second best hitter on this group, standing at the plate, a two-way player for New Jersey. Came up with four hits in the regional round, including a double, scored a couple of runs. But here, she wants to help herself in the circle if she can do something at the plate and get on base. O'Neal, who is just a really versatile player and, and what we will continue to say throughout this tournament and this event is a number of great athletes. They have versatility, they're learning positions and O'Neal swinging away at that one, falls foul near the wall. I think it's great too that a lot of these pitchers, obviously they, they have to have an at-bat during the game. So they're getting a perspective of the game from the hitter's perspective as well. And I think that helps them out there in the circle. One, to get kind of get an idea for what the strike zone is, but two, also to have a mentality of what hitters are hunting for in certain counts. She waits on that one and lines it to tail and star at shortstop two away. It's a really nice piece of hitting. Aaliyah O'Neal got all of that ball. It's a two-strike changeup. She recognizes it. She keeps her hands back and barrels it up. It just goes straight to Taylin Starr, who makes a fantastic grab on that low line drive for the second out of the inning. Now here's Brooke DeWitt. DeWitt takes a look at strike one, the 5'4", 13-year-old out of Hamilton, New Jersey. Her coach Mike Sable likes the way she's got quick hands at the plate. But really, Madison, it'll be interesting to see, and this will be a test for the offense, just as much as it will be for Aaliyah O'Neill to see if they can produce runs for her in the circle. Cambry Casey thus far looking sharp early. And to your point, Tiffany, I think New Jersey is going to have to start making adjustments, especially on that curveball that we're seeing out of Casey earlier, early in this game. She's been able to command it and pinpoint it right on that outside half of the plate. Swing and a miss. Two strikeouts to start this game. Side retired for Cambry Casey. Already a great start for the Southwest champs. In the circle behind Casey, open dangerous part of the lineup for this team. And from what I've seen, they have the ability to hit all types of pitching, all types of pitches. They have a very specific game plan when they get up to the plate, so it's very difficult for these pitchers to have to go against. But Aaliyah O'Neill is fantastic in the circle for New Jersey, and she is definitely up for the challenge. She delivers the first pitch to Kierstead, and that's called a strike. Three and two in the sectionals, sectionals, excuse me, regionals. Remember, she pitched all 29 innings to make it to this point. They were runners up to New York, who we will see later today. This one popped high, towering in field. Ball comes right down the glove of Alpin and out number one. And it looks like we might end up seeing Kirstead come back into the box. It looks like it was an illegal pitch that was called on Aaliyah O'Neill. So instead of recording the first out, it's going to bring Kirstead back into the box. Let me tell you something. I'm so glad I have you sitting next to me because <laughs> I didn't see that at all. And I'm thinking routine and everyone here Tiffany, may I've have got thought your back. the same, but thank you. We're only two games into this. <laughs> you know I've got your back, Tiffany, all the way. So Oklahoma will see their leadoff hitter, Alexis Kierstead, get another crack at it. One and one after the illegal pitch, and we go back to it right here. Taking another look at it here. 
So one thing that you want to look for is either that right foot from Aaliyah O'Neal that's in front of the rubber coming up off of the ground. You need to make sure that your toe remains in contact with the ground throughout your motion. The other thing to note as well that we've kind of seen throughout the regionals is you're allowed to have your back foot, either your left or your right foot, off of the back of the rubber, but it cannot step backwards. You can rock, but you cannot step any further back from where you plant. So something to keep an eye on as these young ladies are still just learning the game and figuring out the techniques. And look, we see it at all levels. Collegiate game and good opportunity here for Alexis Kierstead to get it going for Oklahoma full count. After she was able to stay alive Eight pitches already to Kierstead, the ninth on the way. And that is called for a strike, and Aaliyah O'Neal shaking her head after it, saying, oh, yeah. I think O'Neal's going to take that strike out looking over the pop fly to second base any day. This is a fantastic curveball on the outside half of the plate. One of the things that both of these pitchers need to do early in this game is establish the strike zone from that home plate umpire. We know that O'Neal likes to throw that curveball. If I'm her, I'd be testing that home plate umpire just to see how far outside I can get that pitch and still get calls. I was going to say, you know, Madison, as a hitter, how do you feel about that? Because when you're trying to get a gauge of that strike, zone it looks like it may have been a little bit more generous than we have seen in other instances as that is popped out to shortstop I mean like how, how do you handle that I, I think to your point Tiffany the key is not to get frustrated with it it is already so early in the game what I would do is I would take that strike out and immediately go to my teammate and say hey that call is getting called on the outside part of the plate look for it hunt it and attack it and we've Seeing how Goose Hutchins, as she's known, hunts the ball here. The dribbler down the first baseline, and it's called foul. So she'll get to do it again. But she hunts down the ball, and boy, she can launch it. I don't know if you even just remotely scrolled Twitter over the past couple of weeks, but the home run that she hit in the first game of regionals, it was a three-run home run against New Mexico. It was an absolute blast over the center field wall. And already, just with these first couple of foul balls, we're getting a good taste of the <laughs> swing that Goose Hutchins likes to put up on those pitches. The sweet swing in lefty. I mean, she legit can get behind a ball and mash it to... 150 yards, I'm convinced. But here, these fences are about 200 all the way around down the left and right field lines. And I think in the center field as well. And gets that one just past the stretch glove of Brooke DeWitt at short. And the two out single for Goose. What makes Goose such a hard out is her ability to hit all types of pitches. She fouled off a changeup in that at-bat. She fouled one off down the left field line. This one is an outside pitch a little bit farther up in the zone. She takes her barrel straight to it, drives it right through that 5-6 hole to try to get something going for Oklahoma here with two away. She's a player that we very well may be talking about in a few years at the collegiate level. And the player who helps to back her up is Candace Burnett. And she talked about just how comfortable she felt with both Star ahead of her and Burnett backing her up and how they can drive her in. She's got total confidence in her teammate. And Candace Burnett is the one who comes sizzling into Greenville. She was 8 for 10, folks, in regional play. You know, math's not my strong suit, but I'd guess that's somewhere around batting 800 uh, for the yeah. entire regional. I would say that's pretty good. And what's even more impressive is she's doing that off of a whole bunch of different pitching that she has not seen consistently before. So she's going up there and executing a game plan eight times out of ten. <laughs> that ain't bad. I'll take those numbers. Take the Vegas, too. <laughs> well, she's just one of those players who, who sees the ball well and She's had the benefit of learning from Haley Galvin, one of the coaches here. He's really worked with the hitters, 
help them find success. And so of the 11 extra base hits that they had during regionals, she had three doubles. <laughs> strike so again O'Neill getting the benefit of that outside corner she started the inning this way and she catches another Oklahoma batter looking right here but we know that Aaliyah O'Neill loves that curveball establishing it early in this game she gets two strikeouts looking to get her team back in the dugout to give them an opportunity to score some runs in the top of the second inning 2016 and 17 and here they are again so they're one of the perennial powers out of this field of 10. And there's a lot of girls on this team that have been playing with each other for a very long time. I believe it was coach Mike Sable that told us eight girls on this team have been a part of back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back state championship teams between O'Neill, Halpin, Penzone, Sable, Schoenfeld, Cepeda, Lopez and Perini. So not only are they great friends, but they also know each other so well on the field, it's almost like they can predict where the other one's going to be before it even happens. Ryan Pinzone, as you mentioned, one of those players, she's now standing at the plate, the four-hole hitter leading it off with Sable on deck and showing felt in the hole. Check swing there. And how ironic it is because they've been playing together for a really long time. Meanwhile, Oklahoma's had like two practices, <laughs> and that's it, before they, coming here. They had two practices, threw a lineup together, and said, hey, we are going to attack regionals, and they did exactly that. I'm not sure they got to know each other very well, staying in hotel rooms together <laughs> the entire time. And here in the Little League Softball World Series, what a great bonding experience mm -hmm. to, to share with your teammates and a memory that I'm sure is going to last, last a lifetime. Oh, yeah, they have all talked about just the time on the road, away in the hotels, getting ice cream and sharing meals, TikTok videos, all that jazz. Brings you together real quick. The 2-2 pitch, and that one was delivered right down the pipe. Great pitch there from Cambry Casey. Strikeout number three for Casey. This is a really great location for this pitch. After setting up pin zone with the changeup, decides to come in with this fastball right at the knees. That is such a tough pitch to hit, even if you do swing at it. But it almost looked like Pinzone was expecting either another changeup or something to come inside. And right there, a great location for her third strikeout. Gabby Sable sees strike one come in. And Sable, the daughter of the manager Mike Sable, former New Jersey State Trooper, is now retired and helping his daughter out and her team and trying to bring home another title back to Robbinsville. Good look at Coach Sable there, and he played a little league ball when he was 12 years old. Now his daughter, 13, gets a wonderful opportunity here. So far, Gabby having a fantastic at-bat up there as well. We mentioned that Cambry Casey throws with some really good velocity out there in the circle, so she's fouled off a couple of pitches trying to get her timing down. And another strikeout, back-to-back -back strikeouts for Cambry Casey. And again, catching them looking. And what I find interesting, Madison, is the way that the pitcher, Candace Burnett, frames that pitch. She does a fantastic job back there. Not a ton of movement, just enough to let that home plate umpire know, hey, I know this is a strike. You know this is a strike, so go ahead and call it for strike three. <laughs> right now, Casey very aware of the home plate umpire's strike zone, and she is delivering right now. Schoenfeld ahead of the count now. Two nothing. And Schoenfeld, the catcher for Virginia, so I guarantee she's going up in this at bat, knowing that that outside part of the plate and even off the plate is being called consistently for strikes in today's game. Called strike there. Schoenfeld, she's been around this game, playing it since she was four years old, and 
It all started with this team. So that bond you spoke of is unbreakable. You see Casey getting low. She delivers the pitch. Everyone's got their method of how they get the ball to the plate. But I like how she kind of, as a former bowler, she stoops down to really, you know, dig in and see. Utilizing that leg drive. Mm -hmm. I feel like you see a lot of pitchers kind of do that. I'm reminded a little bit of uh, Monica Abbott and just watching her in the Olympics. And she, I mean, being at a 6'4 frame, she gets all the way down to the ground before every single one of her pitches to try to utilize every bit of that 6'4 frame. That one in the dirt, first ball awarded. So that breaks up the one, two, three inning as Schoenfeldt takes first with two outs. It's a good at bat by Jess Schoenfeld. Again, just fouling off pitches, and it could be because she has a little bit of an advantage being a catcher on the other side, understanding a bit of the strike zone and watching that last changeup go down there for ball four to see if she can get something going. More helping. The lefty swinging away. Halpin, who's a solid hitter for this team. Let's see how she can put it in play and maybe try to find some success because thus far, nobody's been able to unload a hit off of Casey. Casey once again getting up there. One ball, two strikes now with two outs, runner at first. Casey looks to her wristband, gets the pitch. And Halpin chasing that one out of the zone. Three strikeouts in this inning for Casey. Cambry Casey feeling it out there in the circle. Not one, not two, but three strikeouts to send her team back into the dugout. How about that curveball? How about the rise and the change, too? Galvin is a player who is just fresh off the diamond. We're talking about a recent grad of Fresno State, just finishing up her college ball just a few months before now and takes over, head, you know, is coaching here for this Oklahoma squad. Not only that, she's also expecting a baby in November. And you don't hear this very often. No kids on the team. She just does it for the love of the game and to give back to these young ladies. Well, yeah, you're exactly right. She said she wanted to do whatever she could to give back to the girls and the parents who made it possible for her to live out her dream being a fantastic collegiate player at Fresno State. And I think it's a great example for these players, not just to watch collegiate girls play on TV, but actually to be able to be coached by one and to talk to her about her experience and what she did to make her dreams come true by playing playing at the D1 collegiate level because reading through a lot of these questionnaires, a lot of these girls want to go on to play mm -hmm. softball, not just in college, but even professionally as well. So what a great example for them to not only get to know her, but be coached by her, learn her ways, learn her what she made her so successful up at the plate as well, putting up some fantastic numbers for Fresno State throughout her career. I need Hicks leading things off and Hicks is one of those players who can just glean some knowledge from Galvin, who was really introduced to the Little League squad out of Green Country, thanks to Coach Johnny Hutchins and him coaching her brother in baseball. And so here she is. Hicks retired, pops out to shortstop. 
and Lily Beverage. I love that last name. Just cool, refreshing, and you're going to say, ah. <laughs> One thing I think is great, and we were just, you know, talking about Haley Galvin coaching Oklahoma. I think there's a lot of former players that want to give back to these little league teams to do whatever they can to try to get as many girls involved in the sport as possible. A good play behind the plate for Jess Schoenfeld. She found the ball in the sun, tracked it all the way. And now two retired. That was a fantastic play by Schoenfeld back there behind the plate. A big smile on her face. That's a not an easy catch. When you're looking up there into the sun, a ton of backspin on that ball. But a big time catch by Schoenfeld to secure out number two. You know, just kind of talking about the, these players wanting to give back. I do know that uh, Rachel Fox, who was a fantastic pitcher at Texas A&M, we got an opportunity to play together professionally on the Scrapyard Dogs. She is a pitching coach for a couple of these girls on the Oklahoma team between Zoe Griffin and Cambry Casey, who's the starting pitcher for Oklahoma today. So a ton of uh, former collegiate and professional players trying to give back to give these girls an opportunity, something that not a lot of us got to do when we were younger. I can guarantee you that none of my rec league <laughs> games were televised nationally. So just wanting to do whatever they can to get involved and grow this sport because it is just a phenomenal sport to be a part of. And shout out to the Little League organization for helping to make that possible for former players to come and give back because you know there are a number of ways that you can do it whether it's coaching uh, a team like Haley is Haley Redding also on the team as well she having softball experience and the line out to second base and that ends the inning one two three inning for Aaliyah O'Neill and New Jersey not at zero this is going to be a tough one and so far Good one. They already had those poses all lined up for them. Just a great experience. Even before these girls set foot on the field, they are having a blast. Yeah, with the uh, creation of TikTok, I mean, that is really just swept over a little bit of everybody. But this generation especially, uh, yeah, you've got to have it together. What we should do is maybe track at some point some of those TikTok videos during their time here in Greenville. First pitch swinging for Adri Cepeda. And that's out number one collected from Miley Needham at second. Well, I'm sure all these teams have been brainstorming for weeks what TikTok they're going to do to try to make it go viral out there because that seems to be the trend. <laughs> but I love how the coaches then get roped into it. Right, because, you know, Mike Sable and others, everybody wants to see the coach get down. Everybody wants to see the coach. You know, it used to be do it for the gram, but it's do it for TikTok now. Bobbled by Needham at second base, and Kira Perini is aboard safely. You know, Tiffany, good things happen when you put the ball in play, and that's exactly what happens here for Kiara Perini. Just putting the ball in play over to second base. Miley Needham not able to come up with that one cleanly. She gets her feet right in the right position, but it just bobbles around her glove a little bit, and that allows a runner to reach base safely here with one away and the top of the lineup coming back up for New Jersey. And the hottest hitter on this team, Lexi Lopez, who struck out looking to start the ball game. Now with a runner at first and one out. Swings through that one. Casey, whose favorite softball player she mentioned, Jenny Finch, trying to channel the Olympian here, and that one not able to be handled by Candace Burnett. So it's Perini who reaches second base on the wild pitch. And I think we lost a cleat out there at second base on that one as well. It, it, it's back on Miley Needham. She's got it. 
But a good job by Perini just taking advantage of what Oklahoma is going to give her, especially when you're in a game where both pitchers are throwing incredibly well. You want to take advantage of any opportunity you have to get over into scoring position and get just 60 feet closer to coming across home plate. Count even at two all to Lexi Lopez. Got a piece of that one, fouled it back. Lopez all season long has led this team for average, all around great offense. Puts it on the ground. And wonderful play at shortstop by Tail and Star. You see her veer to her left, able to glove it and throw it to first in time. And she was able to make that play all while keeping eyes on Kier Perini advancing from second to third base. Look at how she moves up the middle, takes a look to see Perini's already going to make it safely over to third base and decides to fire it over to first to make sure she gets that sure a second out over there. Two outs with Aaliyah O'Neal, and she helps her on calls. A single to right field, and New Jersey cracks the scoreboard first. Aaliyah O'Neal can do it in the circle, and she comes up clutch for her team again up at the plate, getting a pitch on the outside half of the plate, knowing that Cambry Casey has been going there a lot, getting those calls off the plate as well, attacks it early, drives it out to right field to get her New Jersey team on the board first. The unquestioned leader of this team is Aaliyah O'Neal, showing by example. Gives her team a one nothing cushion. And Brooke DeWitt behind the count 0-2. Casey gets her swinging, and that ends the inning. So a much-needed strikeout there for Cambry Casey, but not before New Jersey was able to break through on the scoreboard thanks to the two-way player of Aaliyah O'Neal. Little frosty, little icy action. <laughs> that or, sounds good to me. I mean, anything fruit or sugar or ice cream mm -hmm. related, mm -hmm. sign me up. The second baseman, Miley Needham, sees strike one. Again, Aaliyah O'Neal putting her team up. Now let's see what she could do in the circle. Miley Needham had a home run back in that regional. And the one to get here for, for Oklahoma to win that Southwest title. They came out of there unscathed, jumped out 15 nothing versus New Mexico and then went on to beat Texas West not once but twice by three runs as Needham swings and misses there. Another strikeout recorded for O'Neal. One thing from talking to Coach Mike Sable before this World Series, he said that Aaliyah O'Neal gets better as the games go on. It's like she gets more and more warmed up as they get deeper into the games. And I think we're seeing her velocity kick it up a notch here in the third inning. Well, she's a player who likes to hover around 55 miles per hour. She's got an arsenal of pitches, and we've seen them all work well here today as that one, a little blooper in the infield, and a throw made in time from Brook DeWitt at shortstop, and a nice play. 
This is a really great play by DeWitt. We were talking about the velocity getting up to a little bit. This one jams Cambry Casey up at the plate, and that one has a ton of spin on it because it's hit off of the handle. DeWitt has to charge it, field it cleanly, and make a good throw over to first base, and she does exactly that. A perfectly executed play on that one. O'Neill just able to switch up speeds and thus far keeping this very powerful Oklahoma lineup limited to just one hit so far. Back to the top with Kierstead. The 0 2 count. And she fouls it back. They like to call her She-Hulk. Because Kierstead just brings that much power when she's at the plate. Lost that one up there. But it's O'Neal who is on cruise control right now, looking sharp and being backed up by her defense as well. New Jersey hanging tight to a 1-0 advantage. They're back when we come back. This team are of Native American heritage, representing the Muscogee Creek Nation, Cherokee, Choctaw, and Kiowa Nations as well. And so it's something that they're very proud of. And they talked about the connection. Like when we talked to Haley Galvin, it's about the connection uh, to the sport of softball and how big it is within their community. It's a part of the culture. She said from like eight to 50, we're all lining up <laughs> and we are playing softball. It's just a love that has been rooted in as a part of who they are. And, and now they're so excited to share with everyone uh, just how important it is to them for a larger audience to know. Well, and Coach Galvin said that softball just brings them all together, brings them closer as a community, and it really shows these players that they are playing for something bigger than just themselves. They're not just representing Oklahoma, but they are representing that Native American heritage. So something that is really special with this Oklahoma team that they take a lot of pride in. And I've heard that watch parties are happening all around. I know they had some watch parties back during the regionals. Creek Nation moves up to watch, and I'm sure they're watching now. So it's a big deal in the state of Oklahoma and to the Native American brothers and sisters. Ryan Pinzone. Leading it off, struck out one of the six victims to Cambry Casey thus far. She's been pretty dominant in the circle and outside of that RBI single from Aaliyah O'Neill after the Perini. Kira Perini reached on an error. That's how they were able to manufacture a run. Casey has had herself a really nice afternoon. You see the ball to strike ratio. I think Casey's just done a nice job of utilizing that outside half of the plate and even off of the plate as well, whatever that home plate umpire is giving her, specifically with that curveball. When you think back to Ryan Penzone's last at bat, she struck out looking on that curveball. So I'll be curious to see what type of adjustments we see out of this New Jersey offense here in the heart of the order to try to not just make contact with the ball, but put the ball in play and try to tack on another run. Pin zone down the count, one, two. And we'll see what Casey comes with here. Again, getting good swings at it. Trying to make the play from first base in the foul territory, and Ine Hicks can't hold on. Hicks got a, good, a really good read on this one. Another high hit fly ball in foul territory that we've seen today. Gets a good jump on it, running after it, and it gets in her glove, and she's just not able to come up with that one cleanly. But a great effort by the first baseman.
Well, this has been a good at bat thus far for pin zone, given the fact that she's fouled away a bunch of pitches. The seventh of the at bat on the way. And nicely done by Cambry Casey and Casey continuing to rack up the strikeouts. And it's another curveball out of the hand of Cambry Casey, setting up pin zone on those inside pitches. It almost moved her off the plate a little bit more to set up that curveball perfectly, placed right on the outside half of the plate for another strikeout for Casey on the day. Nice little pitcher stool that we have going back and forth. I mean, we thought we would see uh, a lot of offense from Oklahoma, and this would play into the strength of New Jersey, who is a very good pitching team. But Cambry Casey has come out and has looked good. She has great composure out there in the circle, and she works at a good pace as well. When pitchers pitch very quickly out there, and I'm not just talking with velocity, but just how much time they take in between pitches, sometimes it can make batters really uncomfortable if you rush their routine. And Cambry Casey moves very quickly out there, gets right on the rubber, gets set, and throws her pitch. Sometimes it almost looked like her catcher, Candace Burnett, is still looking at the signs when she's getting ready to go into her windup. The grounder back to Casey fielded well and two away and it speaks to oftentimes you hear coaches across all sports talking about setting the tone and playing your game and if they can play your game as opposed to you adjusting to theirs that's key and, and Casey has got full command right now. And a lot of times as a batter, the way to combat that is to call time and make sure the umpire has time. You'll see batters put their hands up when they step into the box to try to throw the pitcher off balance and to try to slow them down a little bit. But it seems like they are just getting right in there and feeding into that quick routine that Casey has out there in the circle. Schoenfeld, who reached on a base on balls her last at bat with a 1-1 count. The pitch on the way from Casey. Swing and a miss from Schoenfeld. She's ahead to the very versatile catcher out of Robbinsville, New Jersey. When smack foul. On Tiffany, you mentioned the versatility of Jessica Schoenfeld. She was actually a center fielder, and she just transitioned to catch back behind the plate. But we got an opportunity to talk to her pitcher, Leo O'Neill, and she said, Jess just gets what I'm thinking. I don't even have to say it. She just knows what I want out there in the circle, and I think that speaks volumes to who she is as a player to be able to do that. The dribbler to Casey. Nice fielding by the pitcher in the circle. And a 1-2-3 inning for Cambry Casey and Oklahoma coming up to bat. They're big guns. Counts already, but she didn't just stop there. She gets it done with the bat as well, driving that base hit out into right field to score the first run of this ball game and give her team a 1-0 lead. And this is going to be a pivotal inning for Aaliyah O'Neal because if you've watched Oklahoma leading up to this point, you'd say, well, what's happened to the team who averaged 10 runs in the regional round? You're looking at her right here, Aaliyah O'Neal. Well, and when O'Neal's not getting the strikeouts, she's inducing a ton of fly balls. She is getting it in on the hands or off the end of the bat. And because of that, Oklahoma just has not been able to square anything up. The other pitch that she's mixing in there a lot as well is that changeup. So it's on the back of their minds. They're going up there wondering, when is she going to throw it? And I'll be curious to see what type of adjustments this Oklahoma team makes second time through the lineup. Taylor Starr, who a reserved type of personality on the field. But again, she can let her bat do a lot of the talking. That's what happened six of nine in that regional round. But popped out to shortstop her last time up. And Star ahead in the count, two nothing. 
And O'Neal kind of goes back and says, well, hmm, maybe I, I would have wanted that one because it was near. I think it's constant adjustments that are being made <laughs> by both the batters and the pitchers for both sides, mm -hmm. trying to establish that strike zone. And if you're Oklahoma, that is exactly what you needed to get that momentum on your side here in the bottom of the fourth inning, being Nine, down by one 26. run, is getting that lead Junior off runner on That's base up. to set the table for the big time hitters in the heart of your lineup. Four pitch walk to star. Now, one of the stars for Oklahoma and Goose Hutchins. A feared bat in this lineup, and she smokes it to the left center gap, rolled to the wall, and guess what, ladies and gentlemen? We're all tied at one. Speak it, and it shall be so. Goose Hutchins delivering. Hutchins just continues to impress. Already here in this World Series, she is making a statement. There's a runner on board. Her team's down by one. The first pitch that she sees as she just drills that thing out into the left center gap to tie up this ball game with just one swing of the bat. And when we talked with the coaches for Oklahoma earlier this week, they said, look, this is a very confident group. No, we haven't had many practices together. That's okay. This group, unbothered, unafraid ready to embrace the moment. First time they were really playing together was regionals. And perhaps they're figuring out something here against Aaliyah O'Neal as that one is sharply hit and brings home the second run as Oklahoma now takes the lead of the RBI single from Candace Burnett. Candace Burnett sits back on this changeup and drives it directly back up the middle of the field. You can see she recognizes it. She sinks her weight into that front leg. And what that does is it allows you to keep your hands back. When you keep your hands back, you can still hit that changeup even if you're not quite on time with it. She does that, drives it right back up the middle to give her team the lead here in the bottom of the fourth inning. And remember, that's really the heart of the order. They have done the most damage since coming together between Taylor Starr, Goose Hutchins, and Candace Burnett. And right now they are rolling after O'Neal gave up the leadoff walk to start the inning after she has pitched a great game thus far. The leader of this New Jersey team. And I think what O'Neill has to do in this situation is just try to reestablish the strike zone in that at bat to tail and start to start off this inning a little bit tighter of a zone on that outside part of the plate. So I would continue to work what has gotten her to this point, and that is that curveball. Keep trying to work it off the plate to see if you can start getting those calls exactly like that pitch right there. Heine Hicks. Seeing a couple of balls further and further outside now. X was swinging for the fences on that one. She wanted it. She <laughs> wanted it. Well, her favorite softball player is Jocelyn Allo, who, of course, is a big-time home run hitter for the Oklahoma Sooners. And that was a very Jocelyn Allo swing. That was not just going for the routine base hit. She was trying to drive that thing <laughs> over the scoreboard. Towers this one into shallow right, and Halpin is there. And that's the first out of the inning. That's a good job by O'Neill, though, to, to settle in. And we had mentioned that that curveball had been her bread and butter. She had gotten a lot of outs with fly balls, and she goes exactly back to that, what had gotten her to this point in the game. It's a good veteran leader out there settling in and being able to get that out, going up against a really solid Oklahoma offense. You know, I say veteran leader at the ripe age of 11 as well. So <laughs> I was going to say, she's got it going on she, already. Look, <laughs> you know, some some people just kind of born with that. As Aubrey Davis pops up, and both O'Neill and Schoenfeld run into each other. 
And what could have been the second out of the inning. Now has runners at the corner and shaken up as Candace Burnett over at third base. And as soon as that ball went up in the air, I thought, oh man, Leo O'Neill's got that momentum back on her side, but it looks like just a bit of miscommunication between O'Neill and Schoenfeldt back there behind the plate. Both of them going for the ball, both of them looking up in the air as well. And it looks like it got in the glove of O'Neill and then popped out. And because it scooted so far away from them into foul territory, that's what allowed Candace Burnett to advance all the way over to third base and runners on the corners here for Oklahoma. So Davis, Aubrey Davis reaching on the air. As you see, sliding underneath the tag in time was Burnett came up a little shaken up. She appears to be okay and a pinch hitter now up at the plate and Zoe Griffin. Mike Sable having a quick conversation with home plate umpire Brian Wolf. Just kind of taking this moment to, I'm not sure exactly what they're discussing, but this is a group who has just been battle tested. You know, interestingly enough, uh, all of their games in the regionals were by way of shutout. And unfortunately, they were on the losing end not once but twice to New York were the East Region champs. The tournament played in Bristol, Connecticut. And New York has a fantastic pitcher yeah. in Haley Arvidsson as well. So it was really a pitcher's stool that entire regional, especially between New Jersey and New York. And we're seeing another a good example of that great pitching out of Elia O'Neill and Cambry Casey on the Oklahoma side. Very close games, and one of the things that they wanted to work on coming into this Little League World Series was their offense. So Coach Mike Sable said, I'm not even sure if we've taken any ground balls. I think we have just hit the entire time because they know that in order to win, you need to score runs. And so far they've been able to tack on one more, but I know that they would love to put on some more runs when they get into the fifth inning. And it seems like we are getting a video review of that last ball that was put in play to see if it were fair or foul. You can see both of them running, and I thought when I watched it, it looked like they were both in fair territory when mm -hmm. they touched the ball, and then it ended up bouncing foul. So that would qualify, as my understanding, as a fair ball because they were in fair territory when that ball was in Aaliyah O'Neill's glove. Absolutely right. You see them on the left side of the line. And so, being told the ruling on the field will stand. And, and I so, think that's the right call. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I think that's the right call right there. And I, I think that it's. I would totally take advantage of the opportunity if I were Coach Mike Sable as well to utilize that video replay, knowing what a huge point in the game this is in the bottom of the fourth inning that puts runners on the corners. But she did touch that ball in fair territory. And it looks like they're going to intentionally walk Riley Dotson and just put her on first base to go ahead and load the bases to induce a force out at any base with one away. I believe they substituted Dotson for Zoe Griffin. So Zoe Griffin is at first. And another new base in Allie Tucker, known as AJ on the team. comes in and that's the great part everyone gets the opportunity to play gets an at bat and Tucker who's been an awesome teammate they say just throughout this process was introduced to this team from Oklahoma after playing baseball with the Tulsa Drillers and so now she's a part of 
Green Country Little League. This group fielded from Muskogee, Oklahoma. Good contact there, goes foul. Still low into. And what a time to come in and have an <laughs> at-bat. Nothing like coming up with the bases loaded. Your team only up by one run, so you really want some insurance runs. Bottom of the fourth inning, 0-2 count, one out at the Little League Softball World Series. So Tucker having a good eye. And former Oklahoma State cowgirl, Sydney Pennington, is giving her softball lessons. And so here she is in a big moment as Oklahoma has grabbed this lead after trailing by a run when they opened the bottom half of the inning. And this one into center field. And how about A.J. Tucker coming in off the bench as the pinch hitter, doing her job, the sacrifice fly, and tacking on that insurance, just like you said, Madison. Textbook fundamental softball right there. Runners in scoring position, less than two outs. Do whatever you can to lift that ball out into the grass to allow that runner from third base to score easily. And A.J. Tucker does exactly that to tack on another run for Oklahoma. And smart base running as well to move on both runners over into a scoring position to give them some more opportunities for some more insurance runs. Here's Cheyenne Dill coming in as the pinch hitter for Cambry Casey, a player who coaches say is just always looking for ways to improve. Gives maximum effort. Good cut there, fouls it away. I think this ending is a great example of what we talked about earlier in this game about how Oklahoma doesn't just rely on one or two players, but their entire roster can get it done at any given time. And Aaliyah Tucker coming up big off the bench with the bases loaded and another RBI. How about this play, having O'Neal to make a decision, laying down the bunt to end the inning. It's O'Neal. They have come on to the scene. They placed third in Waco a couple of years back in the regional. Now. Uh, they had the opportunity to come back after being disappointed, like many, with no 2020 season to make it here to the Little League Softball World Series. It's a big deal. As we know, uh, softball is kind of a big deal. Just kind of a big deal. <laughs> Tiffany, I mean, look, here we are at the Little League Softball World Series in North Carolina, and not just every regional game was broadcast on some sort of ESPN platform, but the Little League Softball World Series is as well. It's a, it's a really big deal, and I think it, it shows just the growth of the sport across the nation and how much passion that these young ladies have for the game of softball as well. I know when we're up here, we're pretty much smiling the entire time that we are calling these games. Nice hit to lead things off is Maura Halpin for New Jersey as they relinquish the lead and now they want it back. Maura Halpin getting things started from the left-handed side of the box, drives this one right back up the middle, a pitch on the outside half of the plate, not trying to do too much, just doing whatever she can to get on board and pass that bat along to her teammate to see if they can cut this Oklahoma lead down to one, two, or none. <laughs> Got to work on my math skills, you know? No, no, no. Math is not my, my strong suit, as we saw earlier Look, you, today. You, you've been pretty good uh, thus far. I'm, I'm, and I think you're like two for two. I'd like right to think I can, I can do the, the eight for 10 batting average is 800 right off the, the top of my head. But I might surprise you, keep you on your toes throughout <laughs> this entire week, Tiffany. <laughs> Alongside the fantastic Madison Shipman, I'm Tiffany Green here with you from Stalling Stadium. Mike Sable making a change. We'll see a pinch hitter as Lucy Canuso is getting the call. And she stands in at the plate. Runner on first, no outs, and Lucy, they want to see her get on base. Why? 
She's fast. And coaches say that she is the fastest player on the team, and it looks like they're going to do whatever they can to try to move that runner over into scoring position. Having Lucia square to lay down a sacrifice bunt just got a bit underneath that pitch and found it off. I wouldn't be surprised if she turns to square to put something down again. Well, she does and fouled off, but that's been one of the focal points that Mike Sable talked about his team having coming into uh, this week of play that since regional, they want to do a better job at the plate offensively because it's been a weakness throughout the season. They've really relied on their pitching, but now they've got to find a way to manufacture runs. Meanwhile, Cambry Casey is doing much of the same of what she's done all game long. Another strikeout retires Lucy Canuso. Cambry Casey getting ahead in the count and look at the location of this pitch at the very bottom of the strike zone even dropping off the table right at the last minute gets Canuso looking for the first out in this inning eight strikeouts for Casey and remember we saw a, a really impressive showing in our last game with Jenna Kiefer with 14 strikeouts. So right now, the pitchers are starting to stand out and have their way as Jordan Grotsky in as the pinch hitter. Grotsky, eighth grader out of Robbinsville, attends Pond Road Middle School. And the chopper to Casey. Casey wisely going to second base, trying to turn the double play, and does. Wow. Well, Tiffany, we knew we were going to have ourselves a battle today. We've got a good game going, but it was Aaliyah O'Neill for New Jersey who got the scoring started, and then Oklahoma answered. Goose Hutchins driving this ball out into the left center gap, tied up the ball game, and then Candace Burnett driving this changeup right back up the middle to continue the scoring, and Oklahoma finds themselves with a three-run lead here in the bottom of the fifth inning. And look, both pitchers have done an outstanding job both at the plate and in the circle. But it's Oklahoma's bats who woke up that last inning. And if you're Aaliyah O'Neill, you've got to find a way to keep them at bay with the top of the order coming up. So you're going to see Starr and Hutchins again. And hopefully for O'Neill and this New Jersey team, no more as Alexis Kierstead starting it off here in the bottom half of the inning. Kierstead is 0 for 2 so far today. Well, Oklahoma comes into this tournament with the highest average as a team, hitting 487. We mentioned already 11 extra base hits coming out of that Southwest region. They were named champs after this very young program. Is looking to continue to have success here. Oh, it's funny how you know these different little league programs field their teams and how they get started and you know the presence that they have in the community and johnny hutchins said you know it it wasn't really hard you know, there, there are a lot of good softball players in, in the state of oklahoma and so when you're putting together a group of all-stars 
you, you're flooded with just terrific talent. Well, I think what's been so impressive about this Oklahoma team, as we mentioned, they only had two practices together before they played in that regional. So to put 13 girls together on the team and have them work so well together, I think is something that is a true testament to just how good they are individually as players. And the one thing that I've seen throughout the regional games and so far in today's game is they seem to do the little things right in the game. They don't swing too far out of the zone. They swing at pitches that they can drive into the outfield. They play solid defense, and they don't try to make the game more difficult than it is. Very simple. Go up there, hit the ball, drive in runs, get your job done, and that's what's made them su successful. What we were saying about Goose Hutchins, she's see ball, hit ball type of player, and that ball's fair inside. The left field line and a two-out double for Goose Hutchins, who doesn't try to do anything fancy or special, but just an excellent hitter. She just has some fantastic hands up at the plate. Look at how far outside that pitch is, and she drives it down the left field line, bouncing perfectly inside that left field foul line for a double to try to get something going with two outs here in the bottom of the fifth. Well, Candace Burnett, who they call Daddy Long Legs because of her height, standing at five foot nine, she brought home Hutchins last inning. Can she do it again here? And Burnett had a great swing on a changeup, her last at bat. So I would not be surprised if we don't see a ton of those out of the hand of Aaliyah O'Neill here in this at bat, and already starting her off with that curveball, which is her bread and butter. This one popped back and caught right there. Jess Schoenfeld sees it smack the glove right in. So a runner left on second base, but Oklahoma not able to push across any. Opportunity for New Jersey to get something going against Cambry Casey, who has been dealing out there in the circle, utilizing that pitch on the outside half of the plate, working the strike zone, working the counts, and she's had great command of every single one of her pitches, getting ahead of batters. And so far, New Jersey has not been able to consistently put together quality at bats, but they are definitely going to look to change that here in the top of the sixth inning. Talking about how well she's thrown the ball. She's thrown a first pitch strike to 15 of the 18 batters she's faced. And now New Jersey comes in to this sixth inning with their final three outs. They've got to try to figure out something and doing it fast. Those first pitch strikes definitely seem to be a trend that we've seen throughout these first two games. When you think back to Jenna Kiefer, who throws for Virginia, she was very efficient getting ahead of batters throughout the entire game. And Case, Cambry Casey, excuse me, has done the exact same thing. And by doing that, the pitchers start to hold the momentum throughout these at bats, start to get people to chase out of the zone. And she's been very good at that so far today. Is again leading it off. Again, who the backup catcher on this team, who has just really gained some valuable experience with this group. The 12 year old is excited about making this all star team, means a whole lot. Tough take on that curveball on the outside <laughs> half of the plate. Seen a couple of those called for strikes throughout today's game. Strikes out yet another. Cambry Casey has been a strikeout machine today. She's very composed out there in the circle as well. She does not get frustrated if a call doesn't necessarily go her way. She just gets right back onto that rubber, throws the next pitch like nothing else just happened. I love watching, again, what these youngsters just find a place of peace as that one was a laser shot <laughs> down the third base line. Mike Sable had to smile at that one and say, whoa, wait a minute, zoom. Leah O'Neill just wanted to make sure that her third base coach down there was paying attention. First pitch to change up in this at bat. 
Cambry Casey respecting that the power Leah Neal has up at the plate. And yeah, Coach Mike Sable knew that one was hit hard. <laughs> he was trying to get out of the way at that one. He was not trying to catch that one, not even close. O'Neill, who is responsible for the lone run for New Jersey, but going back to that point of leadership, we've seen great leadership demonstrated by her here today in the circle and at the plate. And 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 what some of the team talked about was the fact that they loved her little pregame speeches <laughs> that she gave. We did ask her to give us a taste of those yeah. pregame pump-up talks, and they're very motivational, but just mm -hmm. about how excited and how proud they are to represent their hometowns in a Little League Softball World Series. Would she go around? And Jim Gill at first base says no, but they were also very personal. She, you know, she wasn't trying to give up too much of that information. <laughs> it was it was very specific to the team. She wasn't giving us the secret stuff. No. That, that Whatever no. works for their team, she was keeping close <laughs> to the family. That one called strike on the outside corner. And now double digits in strikeouts for Cambry Casey. And all of these strikeouts, you do not see Cambry Casey flinch at all. No smile, no frown. She is the same pitcher no matter what is happening throughout the game. Good, bad, it doesn't matter. She is so consistent out there in the circle and is almost scary consistent just the way that she's very <laughs> stoic out there in the circle for her team. Last out here for New Jersey. Pinch hitter, that's actually Aubrey Sagar. Getting the opportunity. Two outs here. Swing fouled away. One and one. Remember, coming up at 4 p.m., it's Indiana and the reigning 2019 Little League Softball World Series champions, North Carolina. And closing it out is Arizona and New York. At 7 p.m. Eastern, you can catch all those here on our ESPN networks. Good pitch there from Cambry Casey. All Sagar could do was look. Two balls, two strikes, and two outs here. Just got a piece of it to stay alive. I'm talking to Coach Mike Sable before this Little League World Series, he said that Aubrey Sager has a really powerful bat, much like her favorite athlete, which is Aaron Judge. And we know that he can hit <laughs> oh, the ball yeah. a long way. He can launch it for the Yankees. That, a great pitch, caught looking. Start the game, end of the game, all the same way. 11 strikeouts for Cambry Casey. A dominant performance for the 13-year-old and Oklahoma winning their first game of pool play here in Greenville. But we knew we were gonna see great pitching from New Jersey, great hitting from Oklahoma, but I think we undersold the great pitching from Oklahoma as well. Cambry Casey coming out, dealing all business in the circle to get her team the first win in this Little League World Series. Again, you can't get tired of softball because we've got plenty of it. Indiana, North Carolina coming up here on ESPN Plus, followed by Arizona and New York. The final score, three to one. Oklahoma coming from behind. A big fourth inning helped them turn the tide and get the W against New Jersey. For Madison Shipman, I'm Tiffany Green. Much more softball on the way from Greenville.